entrepreneurs come to me who say, hey, I'm multi-passionate or I have more than one business or more than one stream of business. Do I need to have multiple brands? Or in often times they have multiple brands, but they're drowning and they don't have enough time to properly care and feed for both of them. So in this video, I'm going to share what to do with your brand. If you are a multi-passionate or multitasking entrepreneur, let's get to it. If you're new here, my name is Kate Putnam. I'm the psychology driven brand strategist. I help entrepreneurs get what they know out into the world so that they can impact and serve with their genius in the way that they would like to. And I share most weekly videos on branding, entrepreneurship, and psychology. So if those topics are interesting to you, hit the subscribe and the thumbs up on this video to see more. The first question that I ask when somebody is either considering having multiple brands or they already do have multiple brands is to assess whether you have more than one audience or not. Because if you can elevate your brand message to your personality, to your point of view, to your values, to this overarching message or one big idea, that ties everything together, then absolutely keep everything within the same brand, but then recognize that you might have additional um, silos or product lines that fall underneath the main brand. My own brand is an example of this. So I am Kay Putnam, like I said, the psychology driven brand strategist. I don't know why I felt the need to say that again, force of habit, but I'm a personal brand, kpatnam.com, and then I have different products. And they're not for exactly the same person for every piece, but they are all for entrepreneurs who are building brands. So all of them can live underneath K Putnam. So I have brand new brand, which is for people who are building a brand from scratch and want to set all of those standards. I have the brand fluency archetype courses, which are people who want to do that deep dive into their brand archetypes and apply them to their brands. I have Amplify Accelerator, which is my advanced six month mentorship, which helps people set up the systems to scale their brand in the market. And I have other little you know, projects. We have Clarity Week, which is an a beautiful introduction to my work and the whole system that I teach. It's only $97. We have the Clarity Workshop, or Clarity to Scale Workshop rather, that is a planning session for how to implement the system that I teach in Amplify Accelerator. So we have all of these different sub brands, if you will. And sometimes you even see this with say like a service-based business who might do perhaps some like physical products and then you might have service-based offers that you generally sell to the same type of person. Maybe it's not exactly the same person that buys both, but there is a congruence between the messaging or there can be a congruence between the messaging. What we're doing with brand building always is we want to elevate the conversation. We want to create magnetism to our brand using higher order messaging. So story, personality, point of view, mission, vision, all of these things should be at the forefront of your brand and what you're actually selling is more of this sub conversation. One structure that does work really well is what I've done, maybe I'm biased, but if you are a personal brand, people tend to give personal brands more leeway because we understand that it's a human behind the business. So if you have some separate skills or talents that can be loosely tied together, that can work really well. So you maybe you are an artist, so you have like a studio where you're creating pottery, but you're also a graphic designer, but there's this thread of creativity, of expression that could be woven through the brand, even though you have multiple different things. As long as you have either a personal brand or an overarching brand name that can logically fit those two different avenues or two different product lines, then you're going to be perfect. Perfect. 
Now, if you have more than one audience, this is where things tend to get a little bit trickier. So maybe you are selling to C-suite executives on one side, but then on the other side, you're selling to people who are just getting started in entrepreneurship. Either you're going to want to combine them, so maybe it's C-suite executives that are making the jump out of the boardroom and into entrepreneurship, or you're going to need to separate those two things because it's not effective to, in general, talk to two audiences at the same time if they don't have enough shared values or shared language between the two of them. And perhaps even a clearer example is, say on one side you are an architect and you are building offices for Fortune 500 companies, but then you have this other love for party planning but you don't wanna do it for corporations, you wanna do it for like little kids, birthday parties, those two brands would need to be separate. And in that case, you have two options. First one would be to prioritize instead of just splitting your attention in two. So make one business successful first and then give yourself permission to do the next one later. In other words, you can have it all. You just can't do it all at the same time. So prioritize which one is going to get your attention first, make that successful, give it all of your effort and your energy. And then when that's done, then you can pick up this other piece that is a passion of yours and see if you want to give that all of your energy for a while. Once that one is already sustainable and set up. The other thing that you can think about is that you don't have to monetize all of your passions. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I love me some business ideas. I have a thousand all of the time that I would love to get into. Like all of these different industries are so freaking interesting. And I could see like how I could add value and what my product suite would be and what the brand would be. And I even have like Pinterest boards and and domain names purchased for many of these, but I have sequestered them over to what I call my good idea fairy list. So I'm just setting them aside. I am allowing myself to pursue in my personal time, just the hobby or like the industry or just like be a part of it in some way without creating an entire business around it. If you're anything like me, you're probably underestimating the amount of effort and time it's going to take to get something to be really successful. So if you're trying to do four different businesses, chances are you would be so much more happy and successful if you focus on one and just let the other ones fall to the side. And I understand how that feels like chopping off an arm or something of that nature. It feels really uncomfortable because it feels like it's part of our identity, but it doesn't have to be monetized. It doesn't have to be your primary money-making, breadwinning activity. I'm getting a little philosophical here, but I feel like this sense of having all of the ideas and not really making progress on any of them, it comes from maybe a fear of failure or not wanting to let people down or let go of pieces of your identity, where it feels like, if you did put all of your effort into one business and it doesn't work out, that that would feel really devastating. It would feel like a lost opportunity. The reality is you're probably gonna have a long, fruitful life. You don't have to do everything right now. You can move some things off into the later list and then truly face that, that fear of failure or that fear of success that maybe is the roadblock all along and pour your energy into that one best idea. Or perhaps just pick it at random if you honestly can't choose between the two, or three, or four, or five ideas that you have. In other words, ask yourself why. Why do you need to have four different businesses, particularly if not a single one of them is at the level of success that you would desire? It's another thing if you have been really successful in one area and want to shift to a different area, and that's a different equation, but you're, if you're at that stage where things aren't, or they haven't picked up yet, just ask yourself why. Like, am I afraid of 
of letting something go and why is that? And lastly, if you have come this far, you have multiple businesses that are serving multiple audiences so that they will have to have multiple brand presences and multiple identities if you are going to move forward and you've ignored all of my advice to let one go or to prioritize one, the other option is to make them work without you as much as possible. So there are ways to scale and leverage your time so you don't have to spend tons of time in both of these brands splitting your energy and attention and you really need to step into the CEO role if you're going to go in this direction. Chances are you're going to need a team, you're going to need some automation, you're going to need scalable products, and you can build more than one business that way if you don't pour all of your energy into two places because you're just gonna end up with two glasses that are half full instead of ever seeing success in either of those areas. So if you insist on staying your multi-passionate sparkly self, which we're not letting go of, even if we choose one business, then really elevate yourself to the CEO. And if budget isn't an option, refer back to the earlier suggestions to either prioritize or to bring them underneath one brand umbrella whenever possible. So there you go, perhaps some tough love for <laughs> entrepreneurs like myself who have tons and tons of good ideas that you want to pursue all at once right now and how to perhaps think about either combining, letting them go, or how to make it sustainably work with all of them at once. So which route will you take? Let me know in the comments. I'm so curious. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching.